Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. And uh, tonight, I'm going to start my stream a little different than usual. I want to give everybody, uh, I want to show you exactly what to do to uh, subscribe to my channel and find out about notifications if you want to watch me live when I stream like this. What you do is you go to my channel page, it's Green Acres Pest Control right there. Um, I've got, you hit the subscribe button right here like this. Then there's a little notification bell that comes up when you've subscribed that you want to hit so it looks like it's ringing, see? Now what that'll do is whenever I go live, it will tell you Jason's live on Green Acres Pest Control and so that you can catch me when I'm doing these live shows and hopefully uh, not miss anything because I have been, had a few complaints. People have been having problems catching me when I was live and wanted to know how to do it. And so I thought I would just do a little tutorial here at the beginning and show you how to do it. So also with uh, this is my donate buttons for people who are interested they've been asking me some questions about that too and there's those at the uh, at the top of my channel art when I talk about my channel art on stream that's where the links are so I'll go ahead and close that off so tonight and there you go now that's what you're used to seeing <laughs> except I've got this little uh, <coughs> termite special tonight that I want to do I want to answer some questions I've had some uh, activity on my termite videos We're coming up into spring type weather uh, I don't know about you know any of my uh, viewers and where you guys live but here over the last couple days it's been plus 60 degree yesterday it was 74 so uh, that's perfect termite swarm weather and I wanted to go over a few questions that people have had I've got one video I think I only have one on my channel that addresses termites and uh, what it is, is it's really just kind of pointing out how bait stations for termites aren't worth your money. Um, now, I've got a lot of flack from exterminators that use things like Centricon and different baits. And the thing is, here, here's my whole, my whole uh, take on baiting for termites. Um, using bait stations is... While it is an acceptable way to get rid of termites, I find that a, now this is, now first and foremost, this is only eastern subterranean termites. I don't know anything about Formosan termites. I don't know anything about drywood termites. Uh, although Formosan termites are subterranean <coughs> termites, you could probably get rid of them in the same way. Um, <coughs> you'll have to excuse me, I still have a cough. Um, this is just about eastern termite, eastern subterranean termites, because that's all we have here in Virginia, um, at least this area of Virginia where I live. So that's what I deal with. But what I do is I apply a termidor treatment um, to the foundation around the exterior of the home and anywhere there's active termites, whether it's drilling holes uh, that are required, like through concrete, through brick, um, you know, whatever needs to be done to get the chemical where the termites are active, that's what you have to do with Termidor. And the way Termidor works is it's a non-repellent termiticide. So the termites do not recognize, don't recognize it at all. The older chemicals like Durzban um, that we used to use, and even before that, Chloridane, uh, and these are, I'm only going to go over the top chemicals that were used during their era. Um, they were highly repellent. And the problem is, if you miss a gap of about a, uh, you know, a toothpick's width, one sixteenth of an inch, that's all the space a termite needs to get into your home. They build their little dirt tunnels, and that's all the space they need. So if you miss that much of a, of a, you know, a little gap around the house when you're putting up a barrier, the termites would be able to get in and get into your home and do damage. So Termidor kind of attacks that in a way that, uh, it's not noticeable as long as you get it where the termites are active. And that includes just treating a stump in the middle of the yard that has termites in it or a mulch bed that has termites in it. You're going to kill the entire colony of termites. Rather than trying to repel them away from the house, you're actually uh, infecting the entire colony with the pesticide. Even if they don't crawl through it, they still come in contact with termites that do. What happens when a termite crawls through Termidor, 
they pick up the chemical on their skin because termites have skin like a person. So it absorbs into their skin, and then as they communicate with other termites, it rubs off through contact. And the way that I explain this to people is <coughs> if you have – if you go to the bathroom and you, wash, and you don't wash your hands, but you come out and you shake someone's hand, that's a contact uh, transference. So that's the way Termidor works on termites that haven't crawled through it because the worker termites are coming back to the colony and they're teaming around with other termites, communicating back and forth with other termites. So they're going to transfer the chemical to the termites that are not ca crawling through it. So you eliminate the entire colony. Typically within 90 days, the whole colony is, is completely destroyed. So uh, rather than having to put up a barrier, wait till the barrier breaks down, and the termites get back in the house again. Um, you're just eliminating the termites completely. And so it's very successful, and that's why I like treating with Termidor rather than baiting for termites. And if anybody comes in, I know a lot of exterminators do come in and watch my channel. If anybody wants to um, you know, give me better information for Centricon or other bait station type uh, services, don't hesitate. You know, to to put in your two cents in the chat. It's live, and and everybody will see what you what you have to say. But um, the main thing is, you're it's a waiting game with a bait station. The termites one, they have to find the bait station. Now you can put the bait station near where termites are teeming, and they'll find it quicker, or they may not find it. I've gone to homes that were using Centricon bait stations, and the termites were not even interested in them at all. They weren't going in them. Termites were perfectly happy eating the house. They hadn't even found the bait station, even though it was right within a few inches of where the termites were teeming. They just didn't find it. And so uh, during that time, while you're waiting for the termites to find the bait station, they're still eating the house. And that's you know causing damage to the home that really doesn't need to be. If you put the termidor right there in the dirt tunnels where they're traveling, they don't have any option but to travel through the chemical, and they die. So that's why I like to use Termidor. Now, there are instances where, like when a well is really close to the house, you have to be really careful to, uh, you know, when the well's real close to the house, you have to be real careful how much chemical you apply to the soil. Um, <coughs> what can you do yourself? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to try. J, J, I'm just going to call you J. Uh, <laughs> Jaleel. Uh, uh, Jaleel, I think that's well how it's pronounced. Um, he asks, what, what could I do myself to get rid of bed bugs? Uh, there's lots of things you can do yourself. Um, I have an entire playlist on my channel about uh, how to get rid of bed bugs. Um, and I'll, I'll answer your question too. But I'm going to give you this link real quick. Um, Let's see here. And, oh, wow, it's like 21 videos now. It, it really is, wow. Okay, so we're going to paste this right here. All right, that's the link to my, to my actual playlist of all the videos I've done over the last year and a half of bed bug treatments and how to do bed bugs. The very last video actually shows how to treat a home for bed bugs. It's a really good video, and I, I suggest you watch that because that's that's a really good one. Um, if you want to know exactly how to treat your beds, mattresses, uh, sofas, uh, Lazy Boy chairs, all that stuff is in there, and it shows how to do that. But um, I would recommend using something like Crossfire or Alpine WSG. Let me show you. Let me go ahead and open up my window here. Okay, so we're going to show you, I'm going to show you Crossfire. This is Crossfire. Now, it's $42 for a bottle of that, and that whole bottle is what goes into a gallon. That's a 13-ounce bottle. Um, that's how much you mix to a gallon of, uh, boy, my phone going off. But um, that's how much you mix to a gallon. It takes 13 ounces. Um, you don't want to get the aerosol. This right here, you don't want that. You want something like a liquid pesticide to use. 
you uh, you apply that into your gallon sprayer, and you put it around. So that that's not that's not the finished product there. You actually have to mix that to a gallon of water, and you treat like I do in that video that I show you uh, on that on that playlist. If you click that link and go to the very last video in the playlist, that will show you. Uh, how to treat the bed, and that's the way you do it. You use the crossfire, and you treat your bed with that. Uh, you can use Alpine, and here's another. I'll show you this. This is also another way, another chemical you could use to treat for bed bugs. It's very effective. This is uh, Alpine WSG. It is a granulated pesticide, so it's which water soluble granule. That's what WSG stands for. And you mix 30 grams to one gallon of water. That's how you mix that for bed bugs. And now the only thing with Alpine is you cannot treat a mattress with it. You could treat the box spring, but you can't treat the mattress. And so that's why I like Crossfire, because Crossfire does allow for the treatment of mattresses. Um, you can use diatomaceous earth, but I would recommend only using that inside the box spring. And if you're using something like Crossfire anyway, you don't want to get the uh, diatomaceous earth wet. You don't want to get a pesticide dust wet ever. Um, it's not going to be as effective when it's wet. So you're better off just doing the Crossfire and seeing how that works for you. I really think it will. Um, I've had a lot of people that have used my advice that have used Crossfire and have called me or they've emailed me and said that it's made the world a difference. And, I mean, these are people that are not professionals, have never been a pest control technician. Um, they don't have experience doing my job, and yet they're able to get rid of the bed bugs themselves. So I would recommend Crossfire, number one. It's, it's a really, really good chemical. The only way that you can get it is to order it over the Internet. You can't buy it at Walmart. You can't buy it at Southern States or Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere like that. You have to order it from the Internet. You can find it on places like Amazon. You can find it on, uh, like I said, this is a bed bug supply website you could buy it on. Uh, yeah, right. You could get it from um, wholesalers, but a wholesaler is not going to sell it to you. They're going to sell it to people like me who do, um, you know, I'm doing uh, pest control, <coughs> and I have a license, and they'll only sell to you if you have a license. So uh, I hope that answered your question. If uh, If not, let me know, and I'll try to be a little more in-depth. And there goes my tea. So you're going to be at my my awful coffin tonight. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be too bad. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, it seems like every single time I go on to do a live stream, whether I'm feeling great or whether I've had a cold, I always have a cold on Friday nights when I have to talk to everybody and cough and hack. Uh, what do I suggest for silverfish? That's a good question. Let me see. Um, most any pesticide that's labeled to use indoors will kill silverfish. They're really easy to kill. Um... I'm trying to actually find you a label <coughs> of a chemical that would work really well for you. But, um, I mean, you could go with home defense, honestly. Um, a general-use pesticide is going to kill silverfish. So they're not too hard to get rid of. Um, you want to get rid of them because they will get into your, um, they'll get into your uh, clothing and they will eat like silks. They love fine silk. They like wool. They like uh, you know linens. Um, they like natural fibers, and they eat them like moths. So you want to make sure that you treat for them because you can't let them get out of control because they do damages to your clothing. But just about any pesticide. I mean, like I said, you could probably get Home Defense. Well, I don't know if Home Defense is labeled for indoors though. Let me see. I don't. I'm not. Try to find something that you can buy yourself. That's what I'm trying to go for here. Um, I don't want to give you bad advice and then have it uh, not be labeled for what you need to use it for. Here we go. Yeah, 
Demon Max is a good chemical. Um, let me go ahead and share my window again. <coughs> this is the, the label for Demon Max, specimen label right there. Um, it's got cypromethrin is the active ingredient. And it is very successful at all kinds of pests, from spiders to silverfish. If you scroll down here, you could see that it's actually labeled for ants, cockroaches, uh, box elder bugs. I did a box elder bug job today with it. Uh, carpenter ants, carpenter bees, uh, centipedes. It's real good on carpenter bees, too. If you have any questions about those, it will help with those. Uh, sow bugs and silverfish, see? And other things, too, you know, and it tells you the rate to mix it. You want to mix it at a 1%, which is half of an ounce to a gallon. So, um, and to show you what it looks like, if there's what it looks like. That's Demon Max. And I've talked about that in other shows, too, but that's a really, that's a really, really good pesticide. I've been really happy with it. I've used it for a long time, 20 years probably, maybe more. Um, it's a very effective pesticide. It's really good on spiders, too. So if you have problems with, like, spiders getting into your garage, uh, it's really good for that. Cluster flies, if you have problems with cluster flies coming in in the fall, it's really good for that. It's just a, a pretty rounded pesticide. <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend it well for ants unless the ants are coming in from outside because the ants recognize it as a pesticide, so they will avoid it. Um, it's good if the ants are only coming from outside, like if you find them in a tree or something like that and they're living and they're, and they're making their way in, then it's really effective to keep them out. But once they get in and they make a nest in the home, I would go probably switch up and use something like phantom or, um, you know, something that's a more non-repellent for the ants if they're indoors. And that'll, that'll do a really good job for you on your ant control. But yeah, but for silverfish, I would, do, I would buy demon and it's not that expensive. Uh, this is a bottle of concentrate, and you're looking at one pint is uh, $27. And one pint will last you. If you're just a, you know, um, a consumer, then that one pint will probably last you a couple years. You know, I would look at the label and make sure there isn't an expiration or anything like that on it because you really don't want to use chemicals outside their expiration because they will start to lose their effectiveness. So, um, you know, other than that, I would I would get it. It's really good. It's really, it's not worth losing your fabrics, you know, over $27. So that's what I would recommend. And you can get a sprayer, you know, if, if you don't want, this is what I use. I'll show you what I use. Um, it's, I mean, it's on my, um, this is the sprayer that I use. It's a B&G. This is a really nice stainless steel tank. You can get more so, like something like a Hudson stainless steel, something like that, to to use. Um, you don't have to spend you know three hundred dollars on a tank system. Um, this is more like an old school one here, but this is a two gallon tank. But uh, so that'll mix you know one gallon of finished product, which a half ounce of Demon to to that one gallon will work. If you're really considering doing you know your own pest control, I would advise that. That's a really good um, tank. And it'll last forever. I mean, I've got BNGs that, I mean, I know a guy who's got them that have had them for 30 years and they're still in operating condition. You know, he just has to put new pumps every so often in it, like once every 10, 15 years. He's probably put two pumps in one BNG. So they're just, they're really good products. You know, compared to something like a, you know, just sprayer. Like this. Yeah, you can get that. That's a Flowmaster for $5, but that thing will break on you probably the first time you use it. So, you know, you could throw away $5 or you could spend a little more and get something that, or a lot more, spend a lot more and get something that will last you your lifetime, you know. So, I'm one of these people. I like to, um, I like to uh, buy things that last forever or that have really good warranties. I, uh, I wear L.L. Bean boots. I, uh, you know, I buy their clothing because they guarantee it for a lifetime. And if you ever need another pair, you just take your boots in. They give you another pair for free, you know. So, uh, you know, because they warranty their products. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm full on in, in buying quality 
uh, because the quality will outlast anything else. You know, you want something good, and if they make it good, you want to buy it. Sorry, I had to mute my microphone. I didn't want you guys to hear me coughing. So, anyway, like like I was saying earlier, um, this is kind of like a special tonight on termites, but it does. You don't have. We don't have to talk about termites. Like I said, Jaleel, I'll ask answer his question about bed bugs and John about silverfish. I just kind of wanted to address a couple of problems I was running into on my channel about. Uh, oh, hey, one thing I forgot to ask you: Can bed bugs get into vehicles? Yes, they can. My boyfriend's really paranoid about it, being that it was from the movie theater that we both were at. Okay, so got a story about automobiles. I had a lady that hired me to kill their bed bugs. They have an apartment in Charlottesville, and the apartment I treated three months. Every time I would go, they would have these weird outcroppings of bed bugs. And usually after one or two treatments, you just don't really see them hardly anymore. And so I couldn't figure out what was going on. They kept a really clean apartment, um, really clean. I mean, they didn't have a whole lot of anything in there, like as far as furniture or anything. And he since divorced his wife, and uh, so he's living there now, and I still do the pest control for them. Come to find out, she had helped a friend of hers move and still had some of her stuff from where she moved in the trunk of her car. And the I treated the car, but I couldn't do the trunk because the trunk was full of stuff from this woman's apartment. And so I couldn't treat the trunk because, you know, you can't just spray, you know, chemical all over somebody's stuff. Um, so... Come to find out, the woman had moved because her old apartment had bed bugs. When they took the remaining stuff out of the trunk of the car, the bags that they pulled the stuff out of were full of bed bugs, live and dead bed bugs. And once he divorced his ex-wife, I mean, this sounds horrible, cause, but the bed bugs disappeared. They quit coming in because every time she would go and sit like groceries in the trunk or you know anything in the trunk to bring home, she would bring a few bed bugs in the home from the trunk of her car. So it is absolutely, and this was in the middle of summertime when the sun is beating down on the trunk. You would think it would get hot enough in the trunk to kill the bed bugs, but it didn't. And so she was continuously bringing the bed bugs in the home, reinfesting her home, even though I was treating the home every month. And I still do general maintenance just for pest control. And just in case, he's like, he's paranoid. He's just, just in case, he, he just doesn't want to ever have to pay for a bed bug treatment ever again. And I said, well, that's the way to do it. Like I was telling you on the phone earlier about, uh, you know, the bed bug treatments is that you don't want, if you don't have to pay for one, you don't want to pay for one. It's a lot cheaper just to run general maintenance for bed bugs, and you don't have to worry about uh, paying somebody to come out there and out, out, outrageous prices, you know, getting rid of a bed bug treatment when general maintenance will kill them before they become a problem. So that's what he decided to do uh, after he you know, dealt with it, but, but yeah, um, I had, uh, a lot of my, my uh, channel don't know, but I had talked to Kimberly, people call me on the phone every day, uh, from all over the United States about bed bugs, and I try to help them where I can, and she's, uh, one of two people that called today that I talked to about bed bugs, and yesterday too, and, um, so that's three in the last 24 hours I've talked to about bed bugs, and she had gone out to a movie theater, on Valentine's Day and brought bed bugs home from a movie theater. So, you know, they're in movie theaters, they're in hotels, they're in uh, libraries, they're everywhere people are. They can be in restaurants. Say you go to a restaurant and the guy that was just there that sat in the booth had bed bugs in his pockets. The bed bug crawled out and got into the booth. You go and you sit and you're having a nice pizza or something because pizza is delicious. And so you're sitting there and you're having a pizza and the bed bug that crawled off of him crawls in your pocket and you take it home with you. They are literally everywhere, you know, and you go to a movie theater and you're sitting there and you're trying to enjoy a movie with your loved ones. And the bed bugs are crawling on your clothes and they're biting you on your arms when you're trying to sit there and watch a movie. You know, I mean, they get onto your couch at home, 
where you sit and watch movies and play games and stuff like that with your family, they're going to get on the chairs at the movie theater too because people get them in their home and they're that bad. They're like the plague. They spread like the flu. You know, if you knew that I had the flu and I'm contagious, highly contagious, are you going to come over, shake my hand, you know, introduce yourself, hey, and, and, you know, get right up on somebody and start talking to them if you know they have the flu? Of course not. And that's uh, people don't want to spend, you know, a whole lot of time around you if you've got, you know, bed bugs either because they're that contagious. They are very contagious. You can get them from anywhere. I'm not trying to breed paranoia, but it's just the way they are now. They're just, they're that bad. But we, I mean, in this country, in the last 30 years, we have increased travel in and out of the country to all over the world exponentially. And so a lot of your bed bugs come from other countries where they don't have the same guidelines that we have here over pesticides. And so they end up with bugs and then they bring them, they, they travel all over the world. So they bring them all over the world. So I, I think that has a lot to do with why the bed bugs have become so prolific everywhere. But anyway. I have, um, I've got tons of them, Kimberly. <laughs> Stories about bed bugs. <laughs> oh. <coughs> so. But yeah, if there's any other questions tonight, I, um, like I said, that, that I just really kind of want to address that, uh, the reason I have it as a termite special tonight is because I, I really kind of just wanted to address a couple of, um, uh, you know, questions I had on my other video about, uh, I have a video about, um, you know, bait stations and why they're a scam. And the reason that I don't, <coughs> I don't like um, bait station plans is because, all right, you go and you treat with Termidor. This is one thing I, I was trying to get into earlier, but like I said, ask questions. I like to answer questions. But, um, so I did a Termidor treatment. Termidor lasts about 16 years. Um, and in theory, you don't have to treat again for 16 years. Now, there are things that will break down a Termidor treatment for termites um, quicker, like a broken down spout or if you move the dirt away from the wall or something like that. You can pull the, the chemical away. The chemical is no longer there. It's not going to kill anything if it's not there. So there are things that will break it down quicker than 16-year life cycle on the, on the pesticide. But... I'm getting about 16 years on a terminal treatment as long as people don't like I have one house in since 2000 we first started using Termidor. I have one house that I had to do a retreat on within three years and the reason I had to do the retreat is because the porch had settled towards the house and the water was raining down every time it rained the water would run up against the wall and run down between the porch and the uh and the foundation, and it would run, it would it would get rid of all that chemical that's treated there. Um, I feel like if you have to pay somebody to come out and monitor your bait stations four to eight times a year to 12 times a year, some come out every month, some comes out every other month, some come out every three months, some people only come out once a year or twice a year. Um, you're still paying for a, a, a maintenance plan for something that the termites may never even go into. So... I feel like, you know, while the termites are still able to eat your house, you're paying for these monitoring stations to be checked. And it seems to me that that's just a money sink because you could go 20 years with these bait stations up and you would have killed the termites by now if you had used Termidor. So that's my biggest complaint about bait stations and using bait stations for the control of subterranean termites, um, eastern subterranean termites. Yeah, that's right, Kimberly. Kimberly says that me and my mom thought that bed bugs were just a made-up story like sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite until we got them and we were shocked. So, yes, that's <coughs> that's a thing. Like when I was a kid, it was like, kind of like the boogeyman, you know. You you hear stories about the boogeyman hiding under your bed and, uh, you know, if you if your hand just dangles off the edge, you know, this, that, that much, you know, the boogeyman will reach up and grab your fingers and b eat your fingers and stuff like that. That's what you think of when you're a kid. You don't know any better. And uh, 
the bed bugs, you know, your, your parents tell you, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite before you go to bed. And you don't know what a bed bug is. You know you don't want bugs crawling on you while you're asleep. You don't want them biting you. Definitely don't want bugs biting you. But I used to think it was like mosquitoes, you know. Oh, like a like a mosquito got in my bedroom and got caught up underneath the covers. Because if you've ever had that happen, boy, that's awful too. You get a mosquito in through your room. Like if you, uh, I love to sleep with the windows open in the spring and in the fall. The fall especially is bad for mosquitoes because they've had all year to breed. And they start coming in the windows, those little teeny tiny ones that even the screen won't keep out. And they'll come in and they'll get underneath your covers and they'll bite your legs all to pieces. Those are awful. Bed bugs are just as bad, except they bite you every night. They don't just get in once and bite you a few times until you kill the mosquito. They get in and they have babies and they bring their friends and they have a party. And they eat you and you're the main course. That's what you are. You're going to feed a bunch of bed bugs every single night. I've had customers that have had bed bugs for years, and the, it's just absolutely awful. It's like the worst thing you could ever see walking in on people, and you, you turn up their bed, and you, well, here, let me show you my uh, Instagram. <coughs> I've got some pictures on my Instagram of actual mattress. Let's see here if I can share my window again. See? That's bed bug poop. That's a mattress. That's what they do to your mattress. They live all around those cracks in your mattress. I've got uh, this picture here. This is of bed bugs on a mattress cover. Uh, the woman had uh, mattress covers on her mattresses, and that now this is this is uh, you know this is an adult. These are nymphs. These are younger. They're not full grown yet, but these are actually able to lay eggs. You've got the eggs. Let's see. I know they're in there. <coughs> oh, here they are. Here's an egg here. Here's an egg here. See, how they, they kind of lay them in clusters. Here's an egg. There's an egg. There's an egg there. Um, So those are, you know, they're, they're, you can see the eggs. This I took this with, with my cell phone. I mean, see, mm -hmm. my cell phone. That's That's what I took with those pictures with. And uh, that was on a lady's bed cover. She had probably two or three thousand bed bugs on one like little area of her mattress cover. And what had happened to her? She had a heat treatment nine months earlier than when I actually I was, went and did the job. Nine months prior, she had a heat treatment done, and they required that she put these bed bags on her bed. And the bed bag was uh, because they, they weren't going to treat the mattresses. They had to cover the mattresses with a bed bag in order to uh, keep the bed bugs from coming out of her mattress. The problem is that the, um, the problem with that is now <coughs> the guy went in there. He had the mattresses in the middle of the room. He was doing the heat treatment, surrounding the bed with all this heat, getting it really hot. They had to be gone for 24 hours. He kept the heat running for 12 hours. From what I understand, it was 12 hours. Um, nine months later, when the bed bags got a hole in them, the bed bugs came out of the box spring. Now, if a heat treatment can't kill bed bugs through a sheet of fabric, I mean, not even that thick. How do you think it's going to be able to get rid of the bugs through your wall that go up in around your outlet covers that are inside behind your sheetrock that's that thick, you know, a half-inch thick wall boards or even just a paneling, you know, just a piece of, you know, wall paneling is thicker than a sheet. Um, so that's one reason why I'm against heat treatments because I've been behind so many failed heat treatments. So many. I, I honestly, I, I lost count of how many failed heat treatments I've been behind. And this is not just in southern Virginia where I live locally. I live in southern central Virginia, and I do a lot of bed bugs locally. But I also drive all over the state of Virginia. I do jobs out towards Virginia Beach. I do stuff down towards um, way south, like down towards Chatham and Danville. I do stuff up around uh, Northern Virginia, like around Arlington, Falls Church area. I do stuff way out uh, near West Virginia. I go all over the state of Virginia for bed bugs. And I run into failed heat treatments 
everywhere I go in the States. And I know it can't be that way in just Virginia. It's probably that way all over the United States and all over the world because that's the latest craze is heat treatments because you spend thousands of dollars more than it would be for a chemical treatment. And uh, because the thing is, when you're, when you're dealing with business, businesses compete over price. The price of Crossfire is a lot cheaper than the price of a heat machine, which is anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars for a heat machine, and you typically need two or three of these heat machines to do the job. You've got to get that money back. You got all that money tied up in that machine. You got to charge for a heat treatment, or you know, three hundred, four hundred dollars for enough crossfire to do ten bed bug jobs. So it's it's a no-brainer. You can you can charge a lot less. You don't have as much invested and in in your in your uh you know up front. You don't have that upfront charge. So you know it that's why it's cheaper to do a chemical treatment. But that's also why a lot of exterminators don't want to do chemical treatments because they don't want to have to go in and flip your mattress and flip your box spring and practically break their back rearranging your entire house because that's what you have to do to do the job right. Um, let me see here if I can. Sorry, I had to, had to find the button. I had to mute my mic. Y'all don't want to hear me hopping and hacking over the microphone. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, when you've got to risk a lawsuit over workman's comp because somebody hurt their back, moving a box spring and a mattress, you know, all you do is send an extra guy on the job, send two people. Um, I take my son with me a lot. He helps me a lot on my bed bug jobs, and he helps tremendously. You know, just that extra set of hands, uh, and you don't do half the work that you were doing before. So, you know, it's not that expensive just to send another guy on the job. Um but that's that's why I just I just I'm I'm still looking at these bed bugs. Sorry, <laughs> I, I just think it's a really effective way to to get rid of bed bugs is to rather treat than to um, use a heat treatment. And not only that, but when the heat is off, there's nothing there to kill the bed bugs. There's no pesticide residual at all. And if you don't get 100% of the problem, they will continue to be a problem later. And so, I mean, you guarantee they will. Um, but anyway, John had asked earlier up above about uh, dealing with rabid wolf spiders, and is demon good for that too? Yes. Demon is the number one best pesticide I have ever used for the elimination of spiders. It is really effective on spiders. I have never used anything better than demon. It is really, really good. Black widows, wolf spiders, any spiders. It is very effective on spiders. It, um, I do garages, you know, because garage is part of your home, right? And a lot of people, I mean, during the summertime, they'll leave their garage open. They'll, they'll leave the door up. And so it's real easy for any bugs to come into a garage. Flies, ladybugs, um, you know, mosquitoes, all kinds of things will just fly in through that open door. And so it's really enticing for spiders to get in, get up around the doors, build their webs, and try to catch any kind of bugs they can. I've done homes with demon um, for spiders, and the garages will be empty of spiders. Even though the doors are open all the time, they don't get any spiders at all. It just works really, really good. I've been really, really, really pleased with demon. I, I tell people it's the best thing for spiders because I've – I've never found anything that does anything better for spiders than demon. I've used lots of pesticides over the years, uh, from uh, Talstar to uh, demon to, you know, like I said, Alpine and all kinds of different pesticides inside the home, and uh, I have really good results with demon. So that's why I, I highly recommend it. And uh, I don't pick paid anything to say this either. You know, I know I promote Crossfire a lot for uh, the the elimination of bed bugs. And it's just, you know, they don't pay me anything to say that. And Syngenta, who produces Demon, they don't tell me anything. You know, they don't, they don't pay me anything to promote their pesticide. 
I just know what works and I tell you what works. That's what I've got my channel for is just to kind of help people out through their own pest control if they need to do it or uh, just to know what it takes to do the job. You know, I had a guy that actually called me up and he's like, you know, I want you to kill my bed bugs. He's like, I watched your channel. I think I could do it, but I'd rather just have a professional come out here and do it. At least you're licensed and insured. and I know the job's going to get done right. I see the kind of work you have to do and I don't want to have to do it. So, <laughs> but, uh, Anyway, if there's any other questions, I don't. I hate to end early tonight. I so said I got 20 minutes. I usually try to do an hour-long episode every uh, weekend, but uh, it looks like it's it's uh, running kind of shy on the questions tonight. Don't have very many coming at me tonight. Looks like I have something. What is this? Oh, let me tell you, too, also, if you need your questions asked live on the show and you don't want to tell people what your name is, you know, you don't want to broadcast it over my live stream, you can send me a private message on Facebook and I will answer your question live on the show. Every I, I do this every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time because I live in Virginia, so it's Eastern time for me. You have to figure out your time zone and all, but you can you can tweet your questions if you want. Uh, you can send me a private message on Facebook. Use Green Acres Pest Control on Facebook and send me a question. It seems like you need to keep your eye on your surroundings, not only for suspicious acts, but also for bed bugs in public areas. Yes, you do. Be careful. Um, the thing is, though, if the bed bugs are hiding behind a seat in a movie theater, you're not going to see that. And the movie theater is dark. So you're not going to see if the bed bugs are on the seat. I mean, the only time you really have to look is when you go into the theater when the lights are first on. But if you come in late, you know, <laughs> and the lights are already off, you're not going to see bed bugs if they're in a theater. You're, you're going to just, you're going to get bit. And you'll probably take them home with you, but you check on your person. You know, if you've got a pocketbook or something like that, check in your pocketbook. Make sure you didn't take any home with you, uh, or you, before you leave the the um, theater, go to the bathroom. You know, put your purse up on the counter. Check in your purse. You know, check your pockets. Turn out your pockets. Make sure you don't have anything in your pockets. Um, that's what I would advise to do if you go to the movies. Um, is DE effective by itself for bed bugs? Sister wants to know. DE as in diatomaceous earth. No, it is not effective by itself for bed bugs. It is effective on bed bugs, but not by itself. It is, you have to apply it properly. Um, I can't stress this enough. I've got a video that actually states in the video never to use diatomaceous earth. I run across too many people who don't use it right. Um, the problem with diatomaceous earth is it's a dust. All dust needs to be applied like a dust. If, if you take your finger and run it across the top of your TV screen, that little bit of dust that comes off on your fingers, that's how thin you want the dust to be when you apply diatomaceous earth. If it's really thick, and this, this goes for diatomaceous earth, boric acid, or any other type of insecticide dust, you want them all to be applied so thin that you cannot see it when you apply it. When you puff it out of the duster, it's like a smoke cloud that comes out, and then it disappears. That's how thin you want to apply it. The reason why, especially with DE, is because it, it has diatoms. Diatom, diatoms are fossilized remains of crustaceans, ocean creatures. So it's like the bugs crawl over glass. The silica dust inside the diatomaceous earth dries out the bug. So not only is their, their exoskeleton pierced by the, um, the abrasion, because it, it's abrasive, uh, it also has a silica dust in it that helps dry out the, um, the insect. So that's how you're killing them with the DE. The problem with DE is that it takes time to kill the bugs, and the bugs are able to reproduce. If the bugs are able to reproduce and they just continue to have babies, even if they die, you've still got a new offspring that's going to that's gonna come up and you're going to continue to have bugs. 
I've been behind a lot of people who use diatomaceous earth for bed bugs, and they still are infested with bed bugs. That picture that I showed here, let me share it again. Um, well, that's this picture right here. That bed was full of diatomaceous earth, and it had bed bugs all over it. Um, and he applied the diatomaceous earth right. He's the only person I've ever been to where the DE was actually used properly, and he still had bed bugs all over the place. Um, so it's not something that I advise using. Really, not an in, it's not an end-all solution. You can use it. Oh, I don't watch Olympics. Sorry, Westwood. <laughs> I, I don't want to see a bunch of people play sports better than me because I don't even like to watch sports because I, I, they play better than me. I, I don't want to be a, a reminded of how horrible I am at sports so <laughs> or sporting events or anything. <laughs> they've changed the Olympics so much over when I was a kid. I mean, they've even got snowboarding and everything now. I just, eh. It's not for me. Now, my wife, she likes the Winter Olympics. You like ice skating, don't you? I love ice skating. Yeah. Now, you know, if they could bring back Nancy Kerrigan, I might watch some ice skating because, you know, that's like wrestling. You know, you got, you got wrestling and ice skating together. Now, see, I could watch that, but that's more like hockey, you know. I, th I think the problem was that she thought they were playing hockey. That's what it was. That's, I'm going to say that anyway. Tan Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my wife, if anybody's wondering. She's sitting across the table from me. She likes to chime in every now and then. <coughs> what do you do with that furniture once it's infested like that? Um, kill the bugs. You know, a, a lot of people will ask me, they'll say, you know, I want to get a new bed, but I want to get rid of the bed bugs first. Absolutely. Get rid of the bed bugs first. Kill the bed bugs, and then if you want a new bed, after the bed bugs are gone, buy a new bed. You know, throw out the old bed, get a new bed. Beds are expensive. Furniture is expensive. It's not cheap to get new furniture. So you want to ensure that the bed bugs are gone and they're not going to reinfest your, your furniture. But once the bed bugs are dead, they're dead. You know, you can still sleep on the bed. You can clean the bed. You can steam clean your bed and, and get all the bed bug poop and everything off of it and clean it and still use it. You don't have to throw away your furniture. The story for the worst job I ever did. All right. Worst job I ever did. I've told this story before. Now, bed bugs. I got two. I'll tell my bed bug story first because this is the bed bug show. Why not? The worst bed bug job I ever did was actually for my ex-wife's uncle. He is a veteran, and he had had knee surgery, couldn't walk really well. And so I told him I would treat his house. He had bed bugs. He told me he had bed bugs, that he'd been fighting them for about six to eight months. And uh, he couldn't – he didn't have anybody to help him. And so I told him, sure. I'll come, and I'll help you, and I'll treat your house for you. And he's uncle you know, of my ex-wife, so I didn't charge him anything. I just did it for him. And I pulled his mattress off of the bed. And I'm not kidding. There were probably 100,000 bed bugs between the guy's mattress and box spring. It was black with bed bugs. And as soon as I pulled the mattress up, they started scurrying up the wall. It was like the whole wall was moving with bed bugs. It was unreal how bad they were. They were living in his curtains. They were living in between his mattress and box spring. They were living in his clothing, in his in his uh, closet. Every piece of clothes. I actually took the clothes out of his closet, and they were full of bed bugs. He had them in his nightstand. He had them in his dresser. He had them in his bathroom. There was not a single room of his house that didn't have bed bugs in it. It was max population, probably didn't even have any more room for bed bugs to live in his house. That's how bad his bed bugs were. That's the worst bed bug job I've ever been on.
Um, the problem with rent a center type places where you're you know you're renting to own your furniture, if someone ever has a if someone ever has a piece of furniture repossessed, I have I have a customer. I used to have a customer. He he was he's an old customer. Um, and they owned a rent to own furniture store. And if they have to repossess a bed, they actually ended up bringing bed bugs into the rent a center store. Um, and I had to go out and treat the store for bed bugs because once it gets in the store, then they can get on any piece of furniture in that store. They don't have to stay on that bed. And no one lives in the rent a center, so they can go anywhere trying to find a food source. And so they get on all kinds of furniture. They'll get on electronics and everything. And so I actually, this is why I'm so, this is the first bed bug job I ever went on. I was probably 18, 19, it was a long time ago. And uh, I actually wrote, I did a lot of research for him. And I wrote a little pamphlet for him to use at his business so that he could give it to his employees so that when they would go around and they would inspect these houses uh, before they actually brought the bed home with uh, back to the whatever, back to the rent center, I told him, I said, you're better off taking the bed and throwing it in a dumpster. If you got to repo it, repo it, but throw it in a dumpster. Don't bring it in your store. It's not worth it. it you're going to risk having to treat everyone's home for bed bugs because you're infesting everyone's home with bed bugs. So they, uh, I actually wrote him a pamphlet. I was like, I was a kid still. I was probably. Like I said, I was like 19 when I wrote this for him and uh, with pictures and everything. And I, I don't know if they ever used it or not. They probably did. But they got pretty good at not bringing bed bugs back into their store. So, yeah, you want to be careful. You don't want to rent to own your furniture. You're better off. Save the money. You know, you don't need it right now. Save the money. and Or go to, like, somewhere like uh, Shules and get a credit card. You know, you, you can get these really good deals uh, at, like um, – was it Shules is one, uh, Ashley Furniture. You know, there are stores where you can get those, like those credit cards that are, you know, uh, interest-free financing for 18 months. Just make sure you pay it off by the end of 18 months. And you don't pay any more. You go to a rent center you're going to pay hundreds of dollars, sometimes more than what it's actually worth because they're providing you a service, and that's what they're charging you for the service. I do not use gross regulators for bed bugs. They've been proven not to work. So I do not use growth regulators on bed bugs. Um, they, they're, they're a waste of money. And that, there's actually a lot of scientific proof that backs that up, that the uh, growth regulators don't work on bed bugs because they breed too quickly. So, um, Another story, I'll tell you this story too. Now this, this is actually the worst, the worst infested place I've ever been. It was a restaurant, a uh, Chinese restaurant, and I went in. Um, all right. For one, the lady that worked behind the cash register, she had sores all over her body, like gross, oozing, like, I mean, the woman probably had leprosy. I don't know. She was really kind of gross, and this is the person taking people's orders, all right? Um. She probably would have been fine if she would just use some soap and water on her face. But that's – maybe I'm being mean. I don't know. She had a serious problem with uh, acne and sores. So anyway – and she would stand there, and she'd do like this and pick at them and, like, you know, scratch her sores and, like, check her fingernails and, like, flick scabs and stuff. It was pretty nasty. Um, They had roaches, and there was a curtain between the – uh, where you order your food, and where they had, like, a dining room. In the middle of the curtain, there was a brown smear this wide, right in the middle, where you would push your hand to pull the curtain to the side because they never took the curtain down, never never washed it ever. They had a box of, like, those fried noodles, the fried, like, egg noodles. And when I, I opened the closet, to spray in this closet, treat in this closet. And that's where they kept this box of fried noodles. 
and it was lined in plastic, and there was roaches all over the tops of these noodles. Um, if I had to ballpark, probably 300 roaches all across the top of these noodles. And, of course, as soon as the light shines on them, they run down into the box. So they had a little scoop right there that they kept beside the noodles. That They would scoop the noodles up and put them in those little plastic, those little, like, those little wax paper bags and roll them up to give to the customer. Um, when I went into the dining room, they had napkin holders, on, of course, on every single table. You take your napkin holder and you slam it down on the table and the roaches would go everywhere. Out of every single napkin holder, there wasn't a single napkin holder that did not have roaches living in the napkin holder. The buffet line, where they did, of course, they did their buffet. Now, this was at 10 o'clock at night, so they had the whole buffet torn down. They didn't have anything in the buffet. But they still had, like, the tray where the plates would kind of settle down into the buffet table. And as you got a new plate, the spring was, it was spring-loaded, so it would push a new plate up. When I opened up the doors underneath, the roaches were living on those little carousels for the for the plates. And they were living in the bottom few plates. That, that they, they were clean, so they didn't wash those plates at night. They didn't take them back to the sink and put them in the dishwasher like they did with the dirty plates. They left them in the buffet for the next day. And the roaches were actually living in the bottom plates because they were never actually pulled. Those bottom plates were never actually used, so they were left in there. And every now and then they would just take put clean plates and just put them on top, and it would just press them down. So those bottom plates actually had roaches living in them. Um, they had paneling, like wall paneling, in the dining room. Every, like, five inches, there was a groove about eh, maybe quarter inch to a half inch thick inset into the wood paneling. Roaches were living in every single groove all along every tabletop. They were living under every tabletop. There was not a single place in this restaurant the roaches weren't living. I pulled the chest freezer away from the wall in the kitchen, and the roaches were this deep, dead, behind the chest freezer. That's maybe six inches to a foot deep, dead. Which, one, they never cleaned behind the ch chest freezer. They never pulled them out away from the wall. And two, that's a fire hazard by itself because it's a bunch of dead roaches piled up behind the, the chest freezer's dead. They never cleaned behind them. I think the only reason that they called me is because the health inspector was going to shut them down if they didn't get a pest control technician out there to take care of their problem. And that's the absolute worst place I've ever been in. It's so bad. It was so bad that I did not eat Chinese food for probably 10 years. It was a long time. I would not go in a Chinese restaurant because that scarred me. I learned how to make some really good Chinese food. I learned how to make rice. I learned how to put soy sauce in it. And, hey, I got Chinese food. That's how easy it is to make Chinese food. I, <laughs> so I, I, learned, I learned how to make it because I love Chinese food, but I'm not. Oh, oh, and even to this day, I am still really leery. There's a couple of restaurants I'll go to, but I know the people personally, and they're not like that. But that one restaurant was really, really bad. So, that's the worst story for you, John. <laughs> Would you say the same of the thrift stores, Salvation Army stores? For bed bugs? Yeah. Yeah, and roaches. Roaches, too. Roaches are bad. In, uh, now, Goodwill is a little better because they'll typically will treat their furniture and stuff back in the back before they actually put it out on the floor to sell it. They're a little better. Um, Salvation Army, not so much. You could get. I have had people that have claimed they've brought in roaches from the Salvation Army. Um, <coughs> um, Alpine WSG is really good for German cockroaches. Um, that's that's a really good chemical. Uh, demon is also good for German roaches, but you need to use, if you're going to use Demon, you need to use it on a clean out, and you need to mix it one ounce to a gallon, which is going to give you a 0.2% solution, and that's your clean out solution, and it'll run them really bad. It'll chase them all over the place, but uh, Demon is actually, that's the clean out recommendation for um, German cockroaches. I also advise baiting uh, using things like Advion and Vendetta are really good. Uh, baits for German cockroaches, but um, Phantom is a good chemical for cockroaches, but it doesn't have quick knockdown. It takes a while, so you want to use it towards the end 
of a cockroach infestation, not at the beginning. Um, and you don't want to co have it come in contact with any other insecticide because uh, phantom is a non-repellent, so it will uh, it will it will corrupt if you get it with other pesticides because you don't want to mix it with a with a repellent. You have to use a separate tank when you apply phantom. So uh, I actually have phantom, but I have its own I have its own tank just for phantom, and that's all I put in it is phantom. So um, I will be right back. Give me just a minute. All right, is that working? Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that, y'all. Been drinking all this water over here for my sore throat, and, well, you know, water. You had to use the bathroom. <laughs> well, you know, that restaurant, Westwood, um, I had a customer. I had, I had my suspicions about that place because I had another customer that told me that they were getting Chinese takeout from that restaurant. And they were bringing roaches into their house from that restaurant. And I started treating the restaurant for roaches. And then I realized that what they said was true. But it's crazy that they continued to buy food from that restaurant. Even after, I told them how bad the roaches were in the restaurant. Because, well, they were my customer, too, and I, I want to try to eliminate their roach problem. They need to stop going to this restaurant. And they're like, oh, we can't. It's just so good. We can't. We have to go there. And I'm like, you realize you're probably eating roaches. Oh, no, no, no. We're not eating any roaches. I'm like, you, you are. You are eating roaches. If you're not eating roaches, you're eating their poop. <laughs> I mean, Oh, but the food is just so good. It's so good. And she'd look at me with a straight face and tell me how good the food was. So, yeah. Not me. Not not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, think about it. If you if you got your favorite Chinese restaurant and it's just so good and the food is just so delicious, now you know why. <laughs> But yeah, John, no problem. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I don't I like to I like the live stream. I like to come in and talk to you guys. What? Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear my wife or not, but she, she makes a good point. She said people are the same way with bed bugs. You know, they don't want to tell, they don't want to tell people they've got them. They don't want to tell their exterminator where they're getting them from. You know, I go to houses and <coughs> I knew I'd start coughing as soon as my tea ran out. But anyway, the um, I, I have people that don't want to tell me where they get their bed bugs from. You know, they may know where they get them from, but they don't want to tell me. Yeah, I, my kids, they brought them home from school. Or, uh, yeah, my mother, she's got them. Or, you know, and it's like you're going to spread them. You need to get rid of them. You know, yeah, if your family's got them, they need to get rid of them. 
if your you know friends have got them you know if they don't get rid of their problem then quit going to their house you know um it's just the way it is it's a, and that's the same way it is with roaches too i've got a friend of mine that i work for and she's a really good friend of mine and her friend has them she quit going to her house because she didn't want to bring bed bugs home and she didn't want to bring roaches home and that's sometimes that's just what you got to do i mean you can still be friends but meet somewhere like a mcdonald's or something you know you don't have to go to their house and and bring bugs from their house into your house and if there's any um you know I, i'll ask you guys too because uh i've got about nine people in here right now i um if you have any ideas for a video that you'd like to see me do, uh, whether it's a how-to video or just an informational video, uh, leave your leave your suggestions in the comments on the on the video or or in the chat, because uh, I'm always looking for new new ideas and new questions to answer. So if there's any anything that you uh, want me to answer on my uh, other videos that I do that may not be a live stream, may have to sit and and maybe come up with some answers for you, then I can do that too. We don't have to just do live stream questions. Uh, my sister's apartment complex just did a heat treatment for those in 120 units. Wow. I bet that was a fortune. But at least they did the whole thing, the whole building. Because usually with heat treatments, they'll only do one or two units. They don't do every unit. And it's better if you're going to have to do a heat treatment to do every single unit in the entire complex. Because you... um. You really just run them all over the place when you don't do them all. And uh, I, I'd still, I think I would still do uh, pesticide residual, even if you do a heat treatment. I would still do a residual on top of the heat treatment because anything the heat doesn't kill, like might be hidden in the walls or hidden away where the heat can't get to them, uh, when the bed bugs do come out to bite you, which they will do, they'll crawl through the residual and they'll die. So. Oh, yeah. So, one time when I was uh, I was doing a really bad bed bug job for a lady, and uh, I came home, and I told my wife about it, and of course, I learned my lesson, because she's paranoid. She gets these these bouts of paranoia. Uh Let's see, I had a question just come in on. Mm. Okay. I just had a question from somebody, and I don't ever give out names via Facebook. Because if you're going to send me a private message on Facebook, your message is going to stay private. Um. But I had a question about uh, from a from a person who lives in New York. They ask, "I live in New York, and I've tried to order Crossfire, but they will not deliver here. Is there anything else just as effective?" This is a question that I come that I get a lot from people who live in New York. You cannot order Crossfire in New York. They they have outlawed the sale of neonicotinoids in the state of New York because neonics have been loosely uh, connected to colony collapse disorder and honeybees. Um, the, the problem with eliminating Crossfire from that list and not allowing people to buy Crossfire is Crossfire is only supposed to be used indoors. You can't use it outside. It's against label to use it outside, and it's only for bed bugs. It's the only bug on the label is bed bugs. It is the most effective chemical for bed bugs. Um, that's my opinion, but it's what I have, in my expertise, what I have come across is that it's the most effective. There is no other chemical as effective as Crossfire. And alpine, which is another chemical similar to Crossfire that's almost as effective as Crossfire, 
is not available in New York either because it is also a neonicotin oil. So you cannot buy either one of those chemicals. Now, there are pesticides that you can buy that will kill bed bugs. I am I, I want to make this clear. This <coughs> you have to be very you have to be very careful how you apply chemical in your apartment, in your house, whatever. There are chemicals on the market that are very successful at killing bed bugs. You do not have to buy Crossfire to kill bed bugs. You do not have to buy Alpine to buy bed to kill bed bugs. There are other chemicals out there that will kill bed bugs, but it's against the label to apply them in a way that would be really effective. Like, for example, your mattress, your box spring. Those are, and, and bed bugs really need to be on the label in order to be able to kill bed bugs with the pesticide. Now, I'm, I say that because it's against the law to treat against the label. Now, as a consumer, you would have no penalty. The problem is, if you apply a pesticide against the label and you make yourself sick and then you try to sue the chemical company because you used a pesticide against the label, you lose because it's your job to read the label. That being said, there are chemicals out there that kill bed bugs, that will kill bed bugs, but bed bugs are not on the label. Demon Max will kill bed bugs, but bed bugs are not on the label. Demon kills lots of bugs that are not on the label because it's a pesticide and pesticides kill bugs. Um, it is the problem with Demon and using it as a pesticide to kill bed bugs is it's cypermethrin. Cypermethrin is a synthetic pyrethroid. The problem with pyrethroids is in a lot of areas, they are actually. Bed bugs are actually chemically immune to synthetic pyrethroids. So I want to get that said. If you use demon to kill bed bugs, it will probably kill your bed bugs. But it's not advised. It is against the law. And <laughs> so, but you know, I, I'm here to tell you that it does kill bed bugs. But you know, antifreeze will kill a dog. Does that mean you can use it to kill a dog? Heck no, don't kill dogs with antifreeze. That's awful. So, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. My wife just brought me more tea. That is wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to get that said, get that out there, and explain that it's against the law to treat for bed bugs with demon. But it does kill bed bugs. I would be... The problem is, is that in order to get rid of bed bugs, you have to treat areas like beds. And not every chemical is the same. Not every chemical should be used on your bed. You have to sleep in your bed. You don't want to sleep in a pesticide that's not labeled to be used on your mattress. But that being said, there are people that are using isopropyl alcohol to kill bed bugs in their home. And they're catching their house on fire because it's alcohol. There were two people last year within a week apart that actually used isopropyl alcohol, caught their house on fire, and each one of them did together over $600,000 worth of damage to their homes. Luckily, no one died in the house fire. But they were using isopropyl alcohol to try to get rid of bed bugs, and they caught their house on fire. I think it would be safe to say that it would be a better use of your money to buy demon and treat your bed with demon than to treat your bed with isopropyl alcohol and burn your house down. But I wouldn't do either because it's, I mean, there are chemicals out there that are labeled for mattresses that you should use on your mattress like Crossfire. But in areas like New York where you can't buy Crossfire, you got to do something. You can't just be without a bed bug treatment. And you can buy... Um, you can order pest control technician. They can come out to your house. They can use Crossfire. It's not against the law to have Crossfire 
in New York, you just have to have a, a trained professional use it. They just want to make sure that when it's applied, it's not going to harm honeybees or bumblebees or any major pollinators. So I hope I answered your question. Um, person who I'm not going to tell who your name is because you sent me a message on Facebook. But, uh, yeah, so just so you know, there, um, there are ways that you can get rid of bed bugs without buying Crossfire. So I hope I helped. But read your labels and follow your label. I'm not telling you to break the label because I'm not going to do that. But it's too much of a risk. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. You can do that if you're getting cotton employees and you want to have it so that you don't get Right, 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 right. Now, my wife, she, she pointed out that you can buy demon for general use pest control, and you can treat your whole house with demon for other bugs. And if you want to try to keep the bed bugs out, that's something I would advise doing. That's what I do. I mean, I treat homes with demon all the time, and it does. I had a lady that I was working for, and she brought bed bugs in. Her attic is like, it's a Cape Cod style home. If you've ever seen a Cape Cod and you go upstairs, you've got the really tall ceiling right in the middle, and then it slopes down to a closet on either side, typically is where they make them. Unless they have dormers, they usually have a closet. The, um... <coughs> The bed bugs were getting into her attic space where she kept a lot of store stuff stored, like luggage and stuff like that. She brought bed bugs in her home, not sure how, but there were thousands of them dead all over the floor in just one month. Because we used demon on her house as a regular pesticide, uh, the bed bugs more than likely came in through luggage, came out of the luggage, crawled out in the floor along the baseboards where the chemicals been applied and just died everywhere. So she ended up not infesting her house because we use demon as a preventative. So if you're worried about getting bed bugs, you can use demon as a preventative pesticide and it does work. So it is very effective on bed bugs. I've seen it kill bed bugs. So I know that it does work. Because <coughs> she the reason that um we found she asked me, she's like, Can you go upstairs and look in my attic? I've got these weird bugs all over the floor and I've never seen them before. And they look like ticks. And so I was like, oh, ticks, well, that's weird. So I went up there, and I, uh, I went all over the, bed, the, the floor, and I found, these, the found bed bugs just all over the floor. And I'm like, these are bed bugs. These are, these are all dead, but they're bed bugs. And that's, that's what was killing them. It's the only pesticide that had been sprayed in her attic for 30 years. It's the only thing that had been used up there. And so um, that's what we attributed to actually killing the bed bugs in her attic. Now, one thing about a pesticide label, a lot of people don't know how you get a bug on a label. Like, for example, if you've got a label and it's got roaches, crickets, fleas, ticks, spiders, centipedes, millipedes, you know, whatever, all these bugs on the label, each one of those bugs had to be individually cleared by the FDA to be allowed to be on the label which means the company, which in this case it was Syngenta who produces uh, Demon, Syngenta had to pay for research to be done using the chemical on those specific bugs. For every bug they add to the label, they have to do research on that bug to find out how it's going to kill that bug so they know how to mix it and everything like that. That's very expensive. I mean, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars have to be spent to add bugs to the label. Demon may be perfectly safe to use for bed bugs, <coughs> but because it's not on the label, you don't know. They've never done any research for bed bugs with Demon, so you don't know how it's going to react. And also, cypermethrin is a cholinesterase inhibitor. Now, Cholinesterase is the chemical that flows between the nerve synapse. So your nerves hover like this. There, that gap between the synapse is where the cholinesterase will flow. It's a, it's a chemical that your body uses to, to let the electric impulse jump back and forth between the synapse. 
if that chemical is not there, the insect dies from nervous system breakdown. That's how demon works, is it works through the in eliminating that chemical. Humans have cholinesterase in their body, and so do insects. So if you poison yourself with demon, it's going to kill you in the same way that it kills a bug through cholinesterase inhibitor. I, I, inhibit, it, I might as well try that. Anyway, <laughs> through the... In <coughs> uh huh? Yeah. So the thing is, though, when you mix demon, you mix half ounce to an ounce to a gallon. It's, it's designed to kill really teeny tiny creatures, not humans. They make cholinesterase inhibitors for end-of-life treatment for humans. Um, it's a pill that you take, and that's the way it works. It's a cholinesterase inhibitor. It will kill you, but it, you don't feel any pain is the main reason. And so they'll use it for a lot of, like, um, terminal cancer patients, um, my mother, before she passed away, she had uh, uh, pancreatitis, and sh they, they had deemed that she was going to live probably six months, and then she was going to die. And so they were going um, to advise her to take cholinesterase inhibitors as well. So it's really a way to kind of uh, help you through your end of life. But the dosage they give you as a human is extremely high compared to what's in something like demon. Um, but then your, your demon is targeted to kill spiders and crickets and silverfish and things that are really really teeny tiny not you know a human that weighs you know 150 200 pounds you know it's going to take a lot more chemical to hurt a human and i've been using demons since i was seven years old and which is almost 30 years and i've never ever become sick from it i've never contracted enough of it to make me sick or or uh to induce those types of of uh you know symptoms of a cholinesterase uh you know, problem. Um, what it does, what the side effect is, if you were to poison yourself with demon, uh, you would have um, nervous twitching, uh, you would get upset stomach, maybe diarrhea, throwing up, nauseated. Um, those are symptoms of being poisoned through a cholinesterase inhibitor, um, with a pesticide anyway. With that's, that's what the label claims on Demon Max. So uh, the MSDS, the Material, Material Safety Data Sheet. That, that comes with the chemical. So that's why I said you really don't want to make yourself sick. You know, there are other ways to get rid of your bed bugs. You can call exterminators if you live in New York and you can ask them. You can tell them, I would like you to use, uh, you know, Crossfire. I would like you to use Alpine. That's safe. you don't know they're not in the clothes. Kimberly asks, if you don't spray on clothing, which you're not allowed to, no label allows for the treatment of clothing, but if you don't spray on clothing, after you spray the house, how do you know it's still not in your clothing? And now, it, it, what, I'm, what I'm figuring you asking, if, if, how do you know the bed bugs aren't in the clothing, right? Um, then you don't, you wash your clothes. If you wash your clothes on high heat water, high heat dryer, you're going to kill the bed bugs. They're going to die. You're not going to have them in your clothes. Um, if you're concerned, they might be in the clothes. That's what you do. Don't take your clothes to the laundromat. Wash them at home. Even if you have to wash clothes all day long, if you're really concerned, wash them all day long. Dry them yourself. I had a customer call me a couple weeks ago that brought bed bugs home from the laundromat. So you can't. <laughs> <coughs> but pe pe the bed bugs are so bad, it makes sense that you could infest your home from laundromats. Uh, you can infest your home from a laundromat with cockroaches, too, because I actually, when I was uh, in the process of moving, we didn't have a washing machine hooked up, and we actually had to do our laundry in a laundromat. And when I closed the dryer lid, a roach ro ran out from around the dryer lid at the, uh, the laundromat that I went to. So you can bring cockroaches home from a laundromat as well, bed bugs and cockroaches. I had a customer. I had a customer of mine 
who, uh, sorry, I, I just check every now and then because people do send me messages on my phone. But I had a customer one time who uh, took his clothing and his sheets and his comforters and everything, and he washed them in the local laundromat. And he actually found bed bugs in the lint tray before he even dried. Like he, they were down inside a little lint tray um, before he even dried his clothes. So someone there that was using that laundromat had bed bugs in their clothes too. So, but yeah, you don't want to spray clothes because you don't want to risk staining your clothes or anything like that. And besides, like I said, you can wash your clothes. So it actually states on the labels that you're not supposed to spray your clothes. <coughs> <All right. coughs> Man, my coffin, I'm telling you what. I'm sorry about that, everybody. When I get a cold, I keep a cough forever. Even if I'm not sick, I cough and cough and cough and for months. I can never shake a, a cough. So just to show you, this is the label for Crossfire. I, I, I bring this up every now and then on my channel. Um, all right, so this tells you, see it's recommended for use by pest control operators or pest management professionals or commercial applicators. That's who it recommends. That's one reason that they will only sell it to pest control technicians in the state of New York. That's why they won't ship it to you in New York, because of that wording right there on the label. Um, so when you scroll down the label, uh, you know, long sleeve shirt, long pants, shoes, and socks, that's what they tell you you need to wear, which that's normal with any pesticide. Um, use restrictions. Now here are the restrictions. This product is not for use on humans or animals, so don't spray yourself. Do not spray product directly on pets, <coughs> which that means you can use it on like your beds and stuff, but don't spray it on them directly. Not for broadcast use, which means you can't spray the whole floor. It's not for like fleas or something like that. It's not to be used all over the floor. That's not the way you use it. Do not use in commercial food processing, so they don't want you to get it in your food. In the home, all food processing surfaces, utensils must be covered during the treatment or thoroughly washed before you use them. All right. Remove pets, birds, other fish aquariums before spraying. I always tell my customers you need to take you know, that stuff out or cover your aquarium. Um, this product will not stain water-safe fabrics or surfaces. However, care should be taken to at least conspicuous area for staining before use. Do not allow adults, children, pets to be entered the treated area until surfaces are dry, which is why I always tell my customers you to be gone for two or three hours after it's done so that they don't, uh, you know, because you don't want people to come in contact with a treated surface before it's dry. Do not apply to plants or crops. Do not treat areas when occupants are present. Do not apply as a space spray, so that means you can't fog an area. Do not wet articles to the point of runoff or drip. Do not use treated articles until spray has dried. Um, you know, it actually doesn't say. That you can't use it on clothes it actually doesn't say that. I thought for sure it did. Maybe my label does. My label might actually say that out of my out of my uh, toolbox. It might actually say that you can't. This may be a newer label. So I guess you could use it on clothes. I don't know why you would, though, because you can wash your clothes. What? Washing clothes with yeah, washing your clothes would be way more effective than treating with Crossfire because there's no way you could get every article of clothing treated. Pro pockets and everything, it'd be better just to wash it. You, you're going to make a lot more. It's going to work a lot better if you just take the stuff and put it in a washing machine. Um, we can never win. They're everywhere. It's crazy. Oh, pfft. bed bugs are easy to kill. You know, a lot of people worry. I mean... They're easy for me to kill. I don't have a problem killing bed bugs. I know there are other exterminators that do. There are people that have problems killing bed bugs. But I've been killing bed bugs my whole life. 
at least 18 years of my life, since the year 2000, I've been killing bed bugs. I've never had a problem getting rid of bed bugs. When I see all these YouTube videos and articles, you know, news articles and stuff like that, where people complain about the epidemic and they're like, oh, it's so awful, you can't get rid of them. They're just so miserable, awful to get rid of. And I've never had a problem getting rid of bed bugs. I think the problem is that people aren't educated. You know, they, they've they been trained not to kill bed bugs. But I was trained from the time I was a child, if a customer calls, you kill their bug. If they call you and they've got roaches, you kill their roaches. If they call you with spiders, you kill their spiders. You don't control the issue. You eliminate the issue. A lot. I had a guy that commented on one of my videos the other day, and he said, you know, because I am vocal about being an exterminator. He's like, that's not a PC term. You can't tell people that you're an exterminator because it's not politically correct. You're going to give people the the uh, false sense of security because you're coming in, you're killing their bugs, and you're going to make them think that you're killing their bugs. And I'm like, but that's what I'm doing. You know, you call yourself an exterminator because you exterminate bugs. That's that's perfectly politically correct. There's no reason you can't call yourself an exterminator. <laughs> you didn't say it at all. No, but that's what people say. I had a guy tell me that I wasn't politically correct by using the term exterminator. And I'm like, well, shoot me. I'm not politically correct. I'm an exterminator. That's what I do. So, um, but that's where the industry has been moving towards in the last 10 years. Uh, you know, when you go to get your <coughs> you go to get your license renewed, which I have to keep, I have to stay licensed and insured. And so you go, you get your license renewed, and they'll tell you, they'll say, "Well, don't do this and don't do that and don't do this because you might get sued." But the label says I can do it. Uh, if the label of the pesticide says this is what you need to do in order to eliminate roaches, in order to eliminate fleas, if you don't do what the label says, you're breaking the law. And so basically they're giving you these instructions and they're telling you to not follow the label. But, you know, if the label says you need to treat in a crack to kill German roaches, then you need to treat in the crack to kill German roaches. That's the law. That's what the label says. You do that. You follow the label. But a lot of exterminators have got this whole sense of, uh, well, I'm going to get sued. But that's not what happens. People just want their bugs killed. They're happy. You go into their house, you kill their bugs, you get rid of their problem, they're happy. YouTube has gotten so bad that if I put kill in the title of my video, if I put a video on YouTube and it says how to kill German cockroaches, my video will get demonetized and they will penalize my channel and they will not allow that video to be seen by people who search the internet for how to kill German cockroaches because I put kill in the title. So I have to use words like eliminate, how to eliminate roaches, how to eliminate bed bugs. Like my, my video I just put up last week, I have to look up the uh, title because I can't remember exactly what it is. Uh, my last video was the most extensive bed bug treatment on YouTube. That's the that's the title. Learn how to DIY bed bugs. All right. I wanted to put learn how to eliminate uh, learn how to kill bed bugs yourself. That's what I wanted to put, but I can't put that as the title because you might offend somebody because you use a four letter word like kill. But isn't that what you're doing? Don't you want to kill the bed bugs? So, or kill roaches, or kill fleas? I had, um, when they implemented this whole new system about six to nine months ago on YouTube, uh, every one of my videos that had kill in the title, all of them got, like, kicked out. And they said, well, you, we're not, uh, your, your uh, video is not suitable for advertisers because it said kill in the title. So I had to go through and change about 15 different videos because it had kill in the title. And I'm like, but that's what people are searching. People are searching how to kill roaches, how to kill fleas, 
how to kill termites. That's what people want to know. They don't want to. They don't want to use a word like eliminate. They want to use the word kill, because that's what people use. So, but that's where the industry is moving, and I'm. I'm. I guess that's why people watch my channel, because I don't care. <laughs> I want to be honest with people and tell them right out. Huh. So, well, it is eleven thirty-eight. We've been filming for about an hour and thirty minutes or so. I am going to have to get off of here and head to bed because I think I'm going to have a long trip ahead of me tomorrow, and I want to make sure I get my rest ahead of me. So you guys have a really great evening. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel like I showed earlier at the very first part of the video. If you want to rewind all the way back, you can see I explain to people how to subscribe and follow me and uh, hit the notification bell and all that good stuff so you get these notifications when I go live. But uh, I do live streams every Friday night, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. So uh, you guys have a really great day. I appreciate it. And I'll, uh, I'll see you next week.